So Mike, this is a Vectrex, which I know you know about. I am like insanely jealous right now because when I was younger, I dreamed of having one of these machines back in the 80s. So this, this is Vectrex. It came out uh, in 1982, 1983. And one of the unique things about this particular console is that it comes with a screen. In this case, it's actually a vector CRT. So this is vector, which is different than raster, which is typically what your Xbox or your Ataris or anything else would have. All the with. graphics are filled in. Yeah, they're just basically crazy lines. Essentially, this is an oscilloscope. Yes. So um, I was really lucky. I bought one when I was at sort of the tail end of the um, the video game sort of crash. Yes. Uh, and I got one for like twenty or thirty dollars. I hate you. Insanely cheap. Yeah. Um, because they were bowling them out. This is not that machine. I actually have two of these machines. One of the machines I have at home is no longer working, but I'm keeping it because I think I can probably fix it. This one's been pretty beat up. I got this one at, at a thrift store, very cheap. I got a bunch of games with it. And another unique feature about this, as you can kind of tell, this is a monochrome display. Black and white. Black and white. So it came with these little Mylar sheets and they come with different colors and you basically would change these out for the particular game you're playing. So each game came with that. Yeah. 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 And because I bought this at a thrift store, it didn't come with the Mylar sheet for the default game, which is Minecraft. Do you want to pick that up for, you said Minecraft. It's Mindstorm. Oh, Mindstorm. I know it's like Minecraft was out in '83. Okay. Yeah. So I, I picked this up at a thrift store, and it didn't actually come with the the, the Mylar insert for Mindstorm, which is the default game that you don't even need a cartridge in. So I actually made one on a laser printer. It's not very good compared to the. Uh, it's still it's not not bad. It's it's good enough. Yeah. Yeah. But there's actually a repro site that's selling these now. If you if you need How to much? get. How much? They're about 10 bucks US each. That's not bad. So if you're missing one for a game, I have a bunch of games, but that's really not the point of this particular segment. No. I've got something even better. So I stumbled across something on Tindy.com, which is one of my favorite sites for really unique and interesting tech. This is for the Pytrex, which is a custom-made cartridge out of Australia that I bought. It's about 50 Canadian, about 41 US, I think it was. And it comes with a cartridge that you attach a Raspberry Pi Zero to, and you put software on that and essentially it boots the Vectrex and it runs an emulator off the Pi on the Vectrex display. And from there you can run all the old games. All the old games actually come with it, yeah. uh, with the software that you download, uh, because all of these uh, cartridges are basically abandonware because the company no longer exists, no one seems to own the, the uh, copyrights for them. But what I found out using emulators with all my other retro consoles and things like that is that there's a pretty burgeoning homebrew community for the Vectrex. So all these guys and gals out there making their own games and demos and things. Tons of stuff, like incredible stuff. Everything from like actual full-blown games and in a lot, a lot of times they're actually really good arcade versions of certain things. Yeah. And also brand new games, completely new based on the technology. And uh, it's pretty exciting to see. There's even a huge demo scene. You remember demos back in the day? When oh, yeah. You would download these demos from the internet or I guess the pre-internet, the, the BBSs. BBSs. Uh, that would show off the, the, the technical capabilities of the machine that you're demoing the thing for. Yeah. A lot of the user groups for these uh, particular consoles and computers would create demos to show showcase the sort of programming prowess that they had and what the machine is Too capable. bad they weren't around back in the beginning days. They're doing some amazing things. Absolutely, yeah. and we're going to showcase some of the cool things that you can actually do and run on a Vectrex. You know, this is 30 plus, 40 years old now, yeah. and it's still kicking and it's still great, and it's super fun. They've even got like video uh, and audio players for this, so you can actually compress audio and play this on it. But the the main reason I got this is because it allows you to have one cartridge that runs all of these emulators. And you know that's a cool thing just for the Vectrex alone. It's it's basically a multi-cart, which you can also buy separately, and those are available uh, in a few different places. But what Pytrex offers that I thought was really unique is an emulator for the arcade stuff. There was a lot of arcade games back in the 80s that used vector displays, things like the Star Wars game, the original Tempest, yeah. all kinds of these games, and you can now run those native ROMs on a Vectrex. Are they as good as the original? No, because typically they were color displays or something like that, but it's still a pretty cool experience. Yeah. And the thing I really liked about Vectrex back in the 80s was that back then, typically most people, if you were lucky, you had one TV in your household. Yes. 
and you had to fight with your sister and your parents as to who gets to watch the TV. Yeah. So good luck playing your Atari then. But when the Vectrex came out, I could put this. Twelve-year-old John didn't have much sway. No, 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 not at all. And so when the Vectrex came out, I could put this in my bedroom and yeah. I could play games all day long. Yeah. And now you can do that with the original Vectrex games, but also all the emulators, all the emulations, as well as the arcade versions and all the homebrew and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So that cartridge really breathed like a whole new life into this. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you and a few other my friends that know what a Vectrex is, they're all extremely jealous that I have this and I get to play with this. I know. But to get, a, to get one of these, it's like thousands of bucks on eBay. Well, we took a look on eBay, and, and these things typically go for at least a thousand US. Yes. If you can find one. Yeah. Uh, and probably more. And some of these ones on, on eBay, they typically have like the original packaging, but it's it still works. And it sounds great, and it has a really cool little controller. And the controller, actually, there's actually a second controller uh, spot, so you can actually have two people playing some of these games at the same time. Now, not all of these emulators that the Pytrex runs has sound, or there's some glitches, a little flickering. Um, you also have to calibrate the Pytrex for your specific machine. Because this is basically a vector display, you can have some nuances as far as where the, the vectors get displayed, how the frequency works with this type of stuff. So, But the nice thing is that the Pytrex makes it stupid easy. This is honestly one of the most easiest DIY projects I've ever done, where you just literally Download the software, put it on the Pi, plug it in, and it just worked. Just works. Just worked. So the Pi cartridge itself, the cartridge is fifty bucks. Uh, fifty bucks Canadian, yeah. And, and then the I zero. got it in like a week from Australia to Canada. That's pretty good. Which I was pretty impressed by. Yeah. yeah. And then you got to buy a uh, Raspberry Pi board as well. A very specific Raspberry Pi bar, which I just happen to have on my bench of course you <laughs> at did, home. Yeah. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, still, it's a really great way to breathe new life into an old console that just sort of extends it and makes me excited about the homebrew community that this place has. And even while I set this all up in one day, as I've been looking more into it, there's actually a whole bunch of other things that weren't even part of the original Pytrex site that I've been finding, new games and new things that you can download and put on this Vectrex. So it's very exciting and very fun console. Now, if you, if you can't get your hand on a Vectrex, there's lots of emulators out yes. there. Yeah. And it pretty much will run on almost any platform, like Raspberry Pis, <laughs> PC, Mac, Linux, whatever you have, little handhelds. And that's always one of the first things I yeah. put on my retro cabinet or consoles. And uh, so you can try it that way for free. Just just Google Vectrex emulator. You'll find what you need. Love it. I'm just going to have to steal this one. No. <laughs> <laughs>